This Bible study is going to be Wisdom and Understanding. Turn your Bibles, preferably the King James, to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. Proverbs um, generally was written by Solomon, King Solomon, who the Bible refers to as the wisest man that ever lived. Although at the end of his life, some of the things that he did makes you wonder, but who am I to argue with the word of God? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5, we read the following, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Proverbs 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Then go to Proverbs 16, 16. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? Hmm. The Bible says that wisdom is better, better to have wisdom than it is to have gold. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? So wisdom and understanding are more valuable than gold and silver. Well, what are, what is wisdom and understanding? Well, what I love about the King James Bible is it interprets itself. In the book of Job, chapter 28, verse 28, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Hmm. Now, fearing the Lord has many different shades of meanings. One of it is means to have respect for, knowing what he is capable of doing to evildoers. If you're an evildoer, you better fear the Lord. But most evildoers, they ha have no fear of God. So the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. In Psalms 111, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Hmm. His praise endureth forever. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Yeah, fools don't want to hear about God's words. They don't care. Proverbs 9 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So if there's knowledge of the holy, there must be knowledge of the unholy. And if you want to know what the knowledge of the unholy is, you could uh, talk to the Church of Satan. They'd be happy to tell you. Uh, it probably only cost you $19.95 for one of their books, right? Which basically is just the opposite of everything the Bible says. That's one thing I learned about the, um, the occult. It's just basically the opposite of everything God says. If the God says, love the Lord, Church of Satan will say, hate, hate the Lord and love Satan. And if the Bible says, thou shall not kill, the Church of Satan will say, do what thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law. In other words, hey, you don't like your neighbor, um, you want his sheep, and, and, and you want his wife, well, Go kill him. No big deal. Do what you will. That's going to be the whole of the law. 
you know, hey, uh, if you're a businessman and you can steal your employees' pension funds and get away with it, do what you will. Never mind that you promised your employees a, a pension after working faithfully for you for 30 years. No big deal. Just leave them penniless and starving and, you know, that's... Jesus said, by their fruits, ye shall know them. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, and verse 2, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. In the book of John, chapter 14, and verse 23, Jesus said, uh, well, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him, and make our abode with him. In the book of 1 John, chapter 4, Verse 16, And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Wow. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. In Matthew chapter 22 and verse 35, and I've read this one a whole, whole bunch of times, then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying. Now this was a, uh, a lawyer, a doctor of the law, the laws of God. This man's a Pharisee, a Jew. I mean, this is not your Harvard graduate that doesn't know anything about the Bible. This is, this is a guy that knows the laws of Moses intimately. So he's asking him a question. He's trying to tempt him. He's trying to trick him. And saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And guess what? That's in the Old Testament. I mean, Jesus is quoting the Old Testament here. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus was probably paraphrasing Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4 on, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which, which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Boy, that's been a failure. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine heart. Heart. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. I'm sorry, hand. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Yep. And it shall be when the Lord thy God 
shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, ah, when thou shalt when thou shalt have eaten and be full, boy, that's America today, huh? Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods, the God of sports, the God of soap operas, uh, the God of money, jobs, careers. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers to cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord hath spoken. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondsmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs, signs and wonders, great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statues, to fear the Lord our God for our good always. We're supposed to fear the Lord for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 17, the Lord says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. You see, you want to seek the Lord early. You don't want to wait until you're dying of cancer and you've got a few weeks to live. You know, I, I, I won't say that people don't, can't get saved on their deathbed. I won't say that. But I tell you what, I that's how much time do we have? In John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Wow, Jesus gave us a new commandment. In Romans 13, 10, we read, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. I'll probably catch some slack. Um, um, I'll probably catch some flack from this, but um, what can I tell you? I'm just quoting the Bible. 1 John 5 and verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Well, what was his what was the commandments? Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. Two commandments. If you can't do those two things, you you got a problem. But in 1 John 2 and verse 15, 
It says, love not, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 19, we read, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Here's a verse I love, Colossians 3 and verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Hmm. The word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Pretty wonderful, huh? In the book of James, chapter 5, um, uh, verse 1, I'm sorry, chapter 1 and verse 5. It says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Do you lack wisdom? Ask God. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But when you keep reading, you know, it, it tells you you have to ask in faith, okay? There's a difference between just asking for something and asking for something in faith. Turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 35. We're going to start probably verse 1. Isaiah is probably the most quoted book in the New Testament. I mean, it is absolutely... Um, Isaiah and, and the New Testament go together. Matter of fact, the book of Isaiah is called the Miniature Bible because it has 66 chapters, Bible 66 books. And um, I believe it's 39. The first 39 chapters of Isaiah is a lot of judgment and stuff. And then from 40 to 66, the tone changes. So it roughly translates into like the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament was condemnation. The New Testament is reconciliation. But it's, people have problems with a lot of the Bible books because they'll tell you, well, you know, uh, the, the thing is, sometimes the Bible will be talking about the present, then it'll talk about the future, and then it'll go back to the past in the same paragraph. You know, I've had people try to tell me that Revelation's in uh, chronological order, and it's not. It's not. Revelation's not in chronological order. Um, the end part, the chapters uh, 20, 21, 22 are, but um, prior to that, it, it's sometimes it was present, John's day, sometimes it was past, and sometimes it was future. And you know, it takes studying to find out. All right, Isaiah 35 and verse 1. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Now, I believe that's future. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. You know, a lot of people don't understand the flood of Noah was, was judgment upon the world, but it was his salvation. The flood of Noah was the salvation of Noah and his family. 
And when the Lord returns in glory and in vengeance and in wrath, it's going to be the salvation of his people. That's when we get resurrected, when the Lord returns. I know a lot of people say, oh, no, we get, we get resurrected before. Show me one clear verse in the Bible that pr proves that we get resurrected prior to the return of Christ at the end of the tribulation. Show me one clear verse. Matter of fact, show me two. Because it said, the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. They can't do it. They can't show you. I don't even think they can show you one clear verse. More or less two. When the Lord returns in his wrath and vengeance, it's going to be the salvation of his people. The, uh, you know, his wrath and vengeance upon the wicked. All right, so, verse 4, Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your Lord will come with vengeance, even God with recompense. That means he's payback. That's what that means. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf, deaf shall be unstopped. In Isaiah, Isaiah 29 and verse 18, And in that day shall the deaf, deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. And then in Matthew chapter 11, we're going to read where Jesus fulfilled these things. Oh, let's see. Matthew 11, verse 1. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Let's take a second look, uh, look at a second witness. Luke chapter 7 and verse 11. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. Who, who went? Jesus. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. So here it is. You got a widow. No husband. Her only son's dead. I mean, do you know what it would be like for a, an elderly widow to try to survive in a world like this? Verse 13. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the beer, B-I-E-R. And they that bear him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, that a great prophet has risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John showed him of all these things, and John, calling unto them two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, 
Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way, and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. To the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's courts. But what what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before my face. I send my messenger before my face, which shall prepare the way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. Hmm. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation, and to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace, and calling one to another, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man, and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. Okay, let's go back to Isaiah chapter 35. And verse, we'll start again in verse 4. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart. That's like a, a deer. And the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. And I believe the waters breaking out in the desert, that's going to be in the, uh, the, the Messianic kingdom. Verse 7. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation, in the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No, no lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing, sighing, sighing shall flee away. You know, people sigh because they're sorrowful or unhappy. 
that's going to be fleeing away. Now, turn to Ezekiel chapter 9. We're going to start in verse 1. Let me give you a little background. This happened in the past, but it's going to happen on a global scale one day when the Lord returns in vengeance. All right, Ezekiel 9, verse 1. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near. You know, charge is uh, we're talking about those that are in charge. You know, the rulers, the leaders, the government people. Even every man with this destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher, higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, and a rider's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Now this is in the temple. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house, and he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. See, the Lord's going to have somebody put a mark upon the foreheads of the men that are sighing, S-I-G-H, you know, and that cry, people that are unhappy, that are weeping for all the abominations that are done in Jerusalem, all the wickedness. People were sighing and crying. And the Lord's going to put a mark upon their forehead. Contrast that to the people that have the, the mark of the beast, 666, in the end times. Would you rather have the mark of God or the mark of the beast? I mean, really. Verse 5. And to the others he said, Mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. What does smite mean? It means to strike. Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eye spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. And they began at the ancient men which were before the house. So if you didn't have the mark, the mark of the Lord on your forehead, they were killed, period. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the stain, with the slain, I'm sorry, with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity, iniquity is sin, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, which means the land's full of murders, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me, also mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. So, one day, vengeance is coming. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 46, and verse 10, For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, 
that he may avenge him of his adversaries, his enemies, people, that he may avenge him of his adversaries, and the sword shall devour, and it shall be satiate, and made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Doesn't that sound a lot like in the book of Revelation, where it says the book of uh, the river Euphrates will be dried up? Oh, yeah. In the book of Micah, chapter 5 and verse 15. And I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Nahum, 1 and verse 2. God is jealous. And the Lord revengeth, the Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay saith the Lord. In Hebrews 10, verse 30, For we know him that he hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. All right, go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Sylvanus and Timothy as unto the church of Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. And that word charity there is uh, sometimes it's translated charity, sometimes it's translated love. Because let's face it, charity is giving to those that in, are in need. And what is love? Giving to those in need. You know, charity and love. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Well, that verse will never be read in, on uh, the TBN channel, will it? Persecutions and tribulations? Oh, hoo, 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 hoo. Uh, let's see. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Oh yeah, it's a righteous thing for God to repay those that give you trouble. Oh, he's gonna, it's called payback, people. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Mm. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. What day? The day of Christ, the day of the Lord. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, people. When the Lord returns in glory, he's going to take vengeance on those that don't know him. But it's going to be a 
a day of happiness for those that are suffering trouble and persecution and taking vengeance on those that murdered the Christians. In Isaiah 25 and verse 8, He will swallow up death and victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from, all, from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. Mm. That's the Old Testament, right? Well, let's take a look at the New Testament. Revelation 7 and verse 17. And now the reason I'm said that this is um, Revelation's not in chronological order. Revelation 7, 17. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Well, if you keep when you keep reading, you'll read about the um, the bowls, the vials, the trumpets, the judgments of God against the earth. So, people that say Revelations in chronological order are putting the cart before the horse, and you can't do that. A horse has to pull the cart. Horse doesn't push the cart. In Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4, well, maybe we should take a look. Okay, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, not old, this old Jerusalem, which is not a holy city at all. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters. You know what a saucer is? People that practice Kabbalah, people that practice witchcraft, the church of Satan. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and saucers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Mm. Oh yeah. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, Descending out of heaven from God. Well, people, I think that's something that we should uh, most certainly look forward to. And I think this will be the conclusion of this Bible study. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Love the Lord. Love thy neighbor. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. This is Chaplain Bob signing off.